I'm visiting the baking capitals of the world. In search of the people, the places, and the traditions that make the very best of baking. From the laid back sunshine vibe of Miami to the European chic of Paris. Oh, superb. Today, I'm in St. Petersburg, Russia. Do you like my new gaff? Nice. This time, I'm living the life of a czar. Wow, that is one of the prettiest things I have ever seen. Where the food is as rich as the culture. And this is gold leaf you're putting on. Amazing. I follow in the footsteps of the glitterati. Elton John, Tina Turner, Elizabeth Taylor. Wow, they've all stayed here, haven't they? I recreate St. Petersburg's baking heritage. That is 800 years of Russian bacon. It's stunning. And I get the VIP treatment in Russia's finest food hall. Looking forward to this. You see, I go to the ends of the earth just to find you good bacon. When they built the magnificent city of St. Petersburg, it was all about showing off Russian culture and sophistication to the rest of the world, with knobs on. Whatever the rest of Europe did, the Russians could do it bigger and better. And when it comes to baking, Russia's all about traditional pies, sugar-laden bakes, and rich rye breads. Great comfort food to keep you warm inside. And boy, do you need it. I kid you not, it must be about minus 12, minus 13, with the wind as well, probably minus 20. So I've got probably about four or five layers on the top, about three on the bottom, fur line boots. And to be honest, I'm still cold. <laughs> it might be a bit on the chilly side, but this picture book city has so much to offer. And that, is one hell of a view. Looks like a massive meringue. This is one of St. Petersburg's most iconic buildings. The Church of Our Saviour on Spill Blood is so ornate, it took 24 years to complete. It's the only way to see the Church of the Spill Blood, with snow hammering against it. It's beautiful. If I'm going to survive these temperatures, I'm going to have to do as the locals do. Money. <laughs> What's your local like? Uh, shabka. And get myself kitted out with a Russian Ushanka hat. A bit much. <laughs> I like the little moth. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? For my first taste of Russian flavours, I'm heading to St. Petersburg's most extravagant food hall. Kubets Eliseyev has been a firm favourite with the Russian elite since 1902. Wow. And the store's VIP attaché, Viktor Yavoronok, is going to show me what my rubles could buy me. Hello, Hello Paul. How, How are you? Hello, I'm very good, thank you. What an amazing place this is. It has got that opulence. It's a bit like the food halls in London, but I think it's another step up. Maybe. Well, we're trying to keep it imperial, classy, for a royal society and, you know, high society. Kubet Eliseyev hasn't always looked this glamorous. During the Soviet Union, it was state-owned, and you'd have struggled to get your hands on the luxury goods lining the shelves today. From the handmade confectionaries and the fine cheeses to luxury vodkas. It's all here for the taking, if you've got the money. Brilliant. But I've spied the ultimate extravagance. Run through some of these caviars, which is a good caviar? All caviar is good, you know, good when you can buy it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> now here, that's a Sturgeon Imperial, and that's the best one. Sturgeon caviar yeah. is, is, yeah. is the best. I want to try all of it, really. I could see, 
I could sit down with some vodka and try a lot of caviar, if I'm brutally honest. Before I get too distracted, there's one more department I really must check out while I'm here. There's something that very close to my heart, some of the bread. This is the traditional bread. You okay. cannot find anything more traditional, you know, in breads in Russia. Okay, that's what I think of when I think of Russia. I think of that rye bread. You think of that heavy rye, almost yeah, the black rye, and that's exactly the stuff I'm talking about. So can I you try? Want to try? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's a great looking loaf, isn't it? It's heavy, which is what a rye normally is. The Borodinsky is one of the most popular rye breads in Russia and was inspired by Russia's battle of Borodino. Wow. The deadliest day in the Napoleonic Wars. That is one of the most potent ryes I think I've ever eaten. It tastes, it's almost caraway, aniseed flavor, but heavy, dense. That is exceptional. A Russian rye in one of the best food halls in the world. Not a bad way to start my trip. But before I leave, Victor's got one last treat in store for me. I'm looking forward to this. The lavish surroundings of the store's grand dining room usually play host to Russia's high society. But today, I'm getting the VIP treatments with the room all to myself. Just grab it with a spoon. OK. Victor's serving up some of the best sturgeon caviar. This is decadence, Russian style. Oh, that is good. I see your eyes started to spark. Yeah. <laughs> it melts in the mouth, though. It really does melt in the mouth. That's the first Russian caviar I've ever had in Russia. And that was delicious. That was very, very nice. And I believe we need some vodka right now. How do you say cheers in Russian? Будем здоровы. Is there an we'll easy way? Healthy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Budan Starova. Yes, that's right. I'll take this one for the team. I could get used to this. I've seen where the glitterati shop. Now I'm off to see where they stay. In the heart of the city, off one of St. Petersburg's grandest squares, is the five star Hotel Astoria. Since it opened in 1912, it's welcomed some of the world's biggest names. But I'm not here to schmooze, I'm here to meet one of the brightest stars in Russian baking. Right, I'm on my way to see the executive pastry chef of this beautiful hotel, Julia Ivanova. Now, she's apparently one of the best pastry chefs in St. Petersburg. So, I'm here to check out what real Russian baking is all about. Yulia and her brigade are in the middle of preparing a traditional afternoon tea. Hi, Paul. Hello. The highlight of which is her speciality, a titan of Russian baking, the Medific honey cake. This is a very traditional Russian cake called Medavik, or honey cake. Honey cake. Yeah, there is a nice history. It goes to the beginning of 19th century, mm -hmm. and our queen, Elizabeth, um, she didn't like honey at all. Somehow they had a new pastry chef and he didn't know this detail and he wanted to impress her. So he created a honey cake and presented it to her and she tried it and she actually loved it and that became her favorite cake. Wow. So since that, it's um, very common in Russia. The classic version of this cake consists of layered sponge but Yuli has created a more refined version by ingeniously using a mix that is part biscuit, part sponge. The biscuit element is softened by the sweetened cream filling, and the whole thing is finished off with a flurry of decoration and a fittingly regal touch. This is gold leaf you're putting on. Yes, we love gold in Russia. So this is uh, our honey cake. Would you like to try? I think I will do. Look, look at that. So that represents to me a building. There's the meringue again, which when you think of the, the church of the spilt blood, there's the meringue. Then you have these beautiful little wafers, raspberry sitting on the top of that, and then pure gold sitting on top of that. Isn't that brilliant? I've got to try some. Do you mind if I tuck in? Feel free. 
Ah, it's nice. Oh, it's softer than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's very fat and sweet. Maybe it's a bit not. Like, it's a bit like me, though. You just described me, fat and sweet. That's actually with the fruit. Mm. That tartness coming from the fruit together with the whole thing is beautiful. I love the fact that Julio put a, a twist on an old tradition, so it's more biscuit-like. It starts off being quite brittle, and then as the cream softens it, it becomes more like a sponge. But the texture of it is spot on. And she's producing magic in her kitchen. But Yulia's not the only star who's been resident at the Astoria. Madonna, Gary Kasparov, Rasputin. Rasputin. Elton John, Tina Turner, Elizabeth Taylor. Wow, they've all stayed here, haven't they? In her 30 years at the hotel, Lydia Luentuna has seen her fair share of movie stars and celebrities pass through the Astoria. It's such an eclectic mix of people. <laughs> It's incredible. Uh, Vladimir Lenin. Yeah. Wow, Lenin. Mm -hmm. In 1919, a certain Vladimir Lenin gave a speech from the balcony of the presidential suite. Thousands of supporters had gathered outside in the square to hear the leader of the Bolshevik party make one of his many speeches that would lead to the creation of the Soviet Union. This is where Lenin gave his speech. I'm just going to go and have to have a quick look. That's a great view, isn't it? But the history attached to it is just incredible. I mean, Lenin. I mean, Lenin was here talking to the people, giving his speech. Yeah, very poignant. Next, this old dog gets taught a neat new trick. A novel pastry ingredient guaranteed to knock his socks off. Vodka? Yes, Russian vodka. And that's an excuse to have one of these in a bakery. And I pay a visit to one of Russia's grandest of grand palaces. Wow, that is one of the prettiest things I have ever seen. I'm in St. Petersburg, the jewel in Russia's crown. There's an extravagance to life here, from the food to the architecture. And nothing is more extravagant than the Winter Palace the most jaw-dropping building I think I've ever seen. It's just staggering. It makes Buckingham Palace, well, look like a two-up, two-down, really. I would like to pick up the electric bill, though. It must be massive. Inspired by my nighttime visit to the Winter Palace, I've got the bug. So today, I'm off to see the Tsar's summer residence with the help of a couple of trusty friends. All right, boys, we need a nice comfy ride. No racing, OK? Just be nice. Right, I'm in Pushkin Park, which is about 25k south of St. Petersburg. These guys here are my new horsepower. Two horsepower. Mosha and Buiskin. I've heard that hidden away deep in this magical park, there's a little bakery that serves tasty Russian pastries. Now all I've got to do is find it. Just look at that scenery. It's a real magical place to be. It is a bit like a fairy tale. It's, it doesn't feel real. And en route, we pass one of the most stunning buildings in Russia. Catherine the Great's bolt hole, her summer palace. Wow, that is one of the prettiest things I have ever seen. Catherine the First was a lady with expensive tastes. 100 kilograms of real gold was used to decorate this Rococo palace, which was built to outdo even the excess and grandeur of Versailles. It's just... Stunning, absolutely stunning. I'm not here just to look at the palace, I've come for the baking. In the grounds of Catherine Park, there's a modest little converted church that serves up traditional Russian cakes fit for an empress. Hello. Hello. Wow, what a great place. Uh, yes. <laughs> now looking down here, I recognize a lot of them. So, eclairs, quiche, 
Panna Rosa, truffles. But those on the end, what, what, what are these? Batrushka. Batrushka. Could I, could I try a little bit, Yes, please? of course. Are these very popular with the people that come yes, in? Yes, yes. Let me have a quick look. What you can say about it? it? Tastes delicious. Yes. It's very, very good. So in Britain, we make a bread roll and we put cream inside it. Mm -hmm. It's like an ice bun. And that tastes like an ice bun with curd cheese rather than cream. But actually, the curd cheese adds another element to it and it just tastes beautiful. This melts in the mouth. So when you were growing up and you were a little girl, did your family make this? Yes, my grandmother, my mother do it. And me too. And you did? Yes. Little taste of Russia, right there. <laughs> I'll finish this one now, it's delicious. So far, I've lived the high life, tasting my way through some of Russia's best sweet treats. But for my city bake, I'm coming back down to earth with a good, honest Russian pie. I'm headed to a place now that apparently makes the best pies in St. Petersburg, a subject that is very close to my heart and indeed my stomach. Stola is a chain of 13 traditional bakeries and cafes with a well-earned reputation for producing finely crafted Russian pies. And with 40 mouth-watering varieties, each stuffed with a delicious savory or sweet filling, from rabbit to apricot, I'm going to be spoilt for choice. The smell in here is incredible. These pies look amazing. Could I try a little piece, please? Yes. Thank you. From palaces to pies, the Russians do everything on a grand scale. And if these taste half as good as they look, I'm in for a real treat. Chicken and rice. It looks amazing. Now you're talking. The taste amazing. The pastry is to die for. But one thing that gets me, it's quite sweet. It's a bit like a brioche, but it looks like a bread, but it flakes like a puff pastry. I'm still unsure what it is. Like many winning formulas, Stoller's exact dough recipe is a heavily guarded secret, which is why it's keeping me guessing. Back home, I normally make a pie using short crust or hot water crust pastry, but here, the pies are much more elaborate. They add yeast, so it's a cross between a pastry and a dough. It's then sweetened and layered with butter. Welcome to my kitchen. What a fantastic place. Yes. Master baker Alexander Vasiev finishes off the mix with a typically Russian touch. Vodka. Yes, vodka. Look, Russian vodka, Russian original vodka. <laughs> in, that's an excuse to have one of these in a bakery. Oh yeah, we, uh, we need loads of vodka. And we need a pool table, probably a dartboard too. Wow, that's incredible. I'm obviously not going to find out the exact dough mixture, but I would love to find out how they make their pies look so good. This is with mushroom, potatoes and cheese. Wow. Yeah. yeah but these pieces here, how are you making these? Just the handwork. So you're, you're rolling it out and yes. then cutting it with a knife? Only handwork, only hand. OK, Paul. OK, Try so you're, you're stretching this yeah. and laying it on, pushing it down. Okay. And then you're putting layers and layers on. Uh, yes, yes. This is almost like doing a lattice work on the top. So it's really Russian ancient tradition that's yes. been passed down. Yes, yes. It's a Russian soul in this pie, you know? Yes, I think you're right. The amount of work that's gone in there is yeah. so impressive. But that gives me an idea. I love Alex's passion. I think the pies are fantastic, but I think it's my turn now and I'm going to do a beef version. For today's city bake, I'm going to make a traditional closed oblong pie called a kulibak. And Alex is even letting me get my hands on some of his secret pastry dough. Thank you. Although this recipe would work just as well with short crust pastry. First, you'll need to gently roll out the dough until you have an oblong piece about 30 by 15 centimeters. We have our base there. We're going to put a little bit yes. of egg around the yes, outside. Just a little bit. Look. And that just helps it stick, yes. basically, when it all comes together again. Now, the filling for this is beef stock, egg, 
which has been cooked and shredded, beef, mince, and I've got cooked onions. Now, all those go together with some seasoning and you end up with your filling for the pie. So if I try and shape this into the middle, it smells amazing. Yes. Okay, and now? Pinch it. Uh, yes. Once the center parting is stuck together, fold the ends up and flip the pie over. Place it on a baking tray and paint with egg wash. So again, the egg wash going on is gonna help anything that goes on top stick to it so it bonds to it and it gives it a beautiful shine and a good rich color as well. Yes. Now, normally, when you take it at that stage, you could bake it like that and eat it like that, not a problem, but Russia takes it to another level. These are the bits that you're gonna to use to decorate, yeah? Yes. Alexander's already stamped out some of the shapes with a pastry cutter and the rest are done by hand. Look, and... Okay. How long in Russia have they been making kulabak? From uh, 12th century. Wow. Yes. That's old. This 800, yeah, yeah, 800 ages ago. Years old. Yes. Looks yeah. so ornate. This is freestyle, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is just freestyle. Oh, yeah. We're freestyle in a pie. Yeah. Nice. One last glaze, and it's good to go in the oven. It does look good. Now, that's going to be baked off 200 for around half an hour? Yes, 200. Okay, fantastic. While we bake this off, we're going to have a little bit of a vodka. Well, it'd be a shame not to dip into that bottle. That's it. Lovely. Looks great, doesn't it? I love the colour. Gorgeous flake on it. Look at that. Mm. Oh, wow. The pastry's got that little bit of sweetness in there. And with that beef filling with the onion, it melts in the mouth. That is 800 years of Russian bacon right there. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Thank you, Alex. Thank, Thank you, you. Tupal. Spot on. I've absolutely fallen in love with St. Petersburg. It's unbelievably beautiful. But the baking was fascinating. Modern baking in Russia is almost identical to the rest of Europe, but they still hold on to their own baking tradition. Kulabak being the ultimate. If I'd have known St. Petersburg was going to be this pretty, I would have come many, many years ago. This is a truly magical city.